and welcome to my channel today we've got this unpacked wrench it's an old brushed milwaukee and the guy the ones are complaining that it doesn't have the same power as it used to and it's a burning smell to use it so we're going to get into it and see what's going on inside Not much to the sides of these. Um, the brushes are well down, to be quite honest with you. And maybe the motor and fuel coil could do with a bit of a clean. There goes one of the brushes anyway. So they were well. Ah, they're falling apart. Look at that. Crumbling two butts. They're well, well, well knackered. Well, well knackered those. Might get away with the motor this time. We'll see. Might be so bad now. Good magnet in that fill coil, so that's good. I'll put the brushes on here now. We will need that. Freeze will hold it on.
I took back to the other night. If you look at those brushes, they were well beyond their sell by date. So that should be a whole lot better now. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos. Welcome to my channel. Today we've got this Makita DGA 463. And she's noisy. And she's stuff. I featured this last week on my channel and showed you what the fault was. It was a bearing, so I'm going to show you how to replace the bearing now. That's what we need to replace. Quite a simple fix. Especially in this one. Because the bearing was only sitting there. So take that head off. This should pull straight out, and this is the Fenton bearing because I shouldn't be able to remove that bearing like that with my bare hands. Sometimes it can be worse than that, they can be disintegrated, but can be fell out of them and stuck to the water, you know, but not in this case. All we need is probably, um. Tap this on gently. You need to be careful, you can damage the bearings in this. There we are, and we'll just put it back together and see if she sounds any better. Moving pretty free now, I would say. Sounding pretty smooth. So that's all it was as a bearing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we've got this 9 amp bearing Milwaukee high output battery. Um, but it's only showing 4.4, 4.5 volts which is way, way too low for an 18 volt battery, which should be shown between 17 and 20. I've already taken the screws out, so we're gonna get into it and have a little look at the cells to show you what's actually going on with this. Right, just checking the individual banks of cells, that's 0.92, and that's 0.7, that's 0.94, that's 0.93, that's 0.93. All well, well below what you consider viable voltage. These should be probably three volts would be very low. Two volts would be a disaster. Less than a volt is really, most people will tell you that's for the recycling bin, but not me. I have other ideas for this. What I'm going to do to get this to go again is connect it to this high output 12 ampere. Um, we'll monitor the voltage as we go and make sure we're getting up there voltage wise and when it gets, starts to get the right voltage we'll pull it off so we don't overcook it 
So here goes nothing. That's plus, plus, minus, minus, right. Here goes. Could be sparks, there might not be. There we are. You see where I jumped right away to 17 point whatever? That's kind of what we want. I'm going to take the other battery off it and see what it does. It will drop a little bit. I'll give it another little zap. I'm going to put it right onto the charger now, just to see. It is dropping in the voltage. That mightn't be a problem. Get onto the charger, see if she takes a charge. No, she's showing a fault. So that didn't work. We'll give it another blast to see if we can bring it up even further, to see if that helps. Just keep it on for a while. Really get the power into those cells. I've been very safe monitoring this uh, operation as a go. Word loves this because I can feel what my, feel one of my thumbs getting very warm. And that's that's kinda normal. Right, we've got her up to 17 now. Let's see if we can get her right on the charge before she changes her mind. No, nope. there's some other fault. If we check the cells, we're up above 3.26 and they're all very balanced, so it's not cell imbalances this year. I'm going to try another technique and I'm going to show it to you. This technique is called circuit board reset. That's what I call it anyway. You go to the negative terminal and the one beside it and you connect them together with something. Like that bit of wire. For a few seconds. And once you do that, you pull that off. You put it on a tool. You pull the trigger. Right, you remove the tool and you slap it on the charger and hopefully it charges now. Nope, doesn't work. Option three, circuit board replacement. We've got to get the old one off first, that's, that's key. Just pop up these spot welds in the plus and minus ends. And we've got to desolder these four points. does help if you remove these two screws as well.
That was nice. There we are. This old board off now. So when they get the new one on. I have to go by the maneuver, but they're all in place now. And what I do now sometimes is put on the screws. Mm -hmm. Right, we'll try the charger now to see if it's any better. 
showing a charging light. So we'll leave that for a little while to see if that solved the problem. It seems like we're going to have a result because there's two bars there already. So we'll keep her going. We're having a good result here. This is fairly charging. It's charging away. But I never tried it in the tool yet to see. Definitely. I would say I'm going to charge away at this, but I'm pretty sure, pretty confident I've got that fixed. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we've got two Milwaukee 5 ampere M18 batteries. This one's a Europe made one, judging by the label on the bottom, though the labels on the side are away. And this one's a USA made one, but they're not doing any harm, they're basically the same. Uh, problems. This one's had a bit of a fall. It looks to be damaged. The, the casing looks to be damaged. There's a bit of dirt on there. I'll try a drill on it to see what happens. It's going, but it's damaged. It's showing it's fully charged. I uh, better check the voltage in that one just to make sure. It's showing a fully charged voltage there. However, I'm all getting it to connect to the top because you can see even the pins are kind of damaged there. I may have to replace the circuit board anyway. Battery number two. Not even lighting the LED in the tool. That's bad. Probably won't charge. Let's see. Clicking away, I don't like that. It's clicking away. Does not want to charge. It looks like it's chargeable, but it's not. I've had ones like that before. When you hear that clicking sound, it's not happening. What we have here is just over 9 volts. It seems to be dropping as well, which is not, not good. So. We'll have to get onto that one to see what the cells are like. Just check the voltage of uh, the banks of cells. 1.71, 1.75, they're very low. Round the same. Yeah. 1 1.71. This is very well balanced but very very low. All the cells are extremely low but extremely close to each other. That's probably good news. And what we'll do in that case is probably give that a little boost to see if we can wake it up again. I've just noticed the bent terminal in this one as well. You see, we get this right up. That terminal's damaged so I'll straighten that in first. I'll try and give that a bit of a straighten. I've straightened that as well as I can. Um, what do you see? But it is a bit shorter than the one beside it. This side of it is shorter than this side. So somebody's maybe burnt a bit off that with uh, a badly fitting tool, badly fitting walkie tool or jump starting or something. We may still have to replace the circuit board in this. But we're going to charge, try the jump start first. Right, what we're going to do now is connect this full battery, this full knockoff DeWalt battery, to the M18. And what that'll do is it'll bring the cells up to a chargeable voltage, hopefully, and give us a battery we can charge. 
what I'm doing here is monitoring the voltage of the battery as we go so we can keep an eye on what's going on if you watch that air it's 8.25 volts now so let's go there should be a bit of a spark here no, no. I'm going to through the board, so that's good. See, it's got up to 17 odd volts there. I'm going to take it away to see if it drops. It's dropping, but not too badly. I'll keep it going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly take all this away and slap it in the charger to see if it takes a charge. All that away. See if we can get it on the charge. It seems to be booting up the way you would expect a, a charger to. That sound that you just hear, that whatever you would describe it, that would signify that it is charging. So we're going to leave it on for a while. And then come back to it. We're getting nicely up to two bars. We might get the three, but this the front doesn't damage, so we'll not get the four. Even though it will probably fully charge. So we'll leave that to the side for a little while and take a look at this other one. This one is a damaged top and it's showing full voltage and it's pretty cool. So we'll get it open to see what's going on out here. Right, it's not that clean now, but um, again, there's terminal damage there too. If you can see that there, that one's badly pushed on. I could try and straighten that and clean everything up. Other than that, I'd have to put a new board on it. What I mean by a new board is one of these. With all the muck blue off the top, I just have to straighten this. That's pushed in a wee bit, but I don't think it's doing any harm. Um, there's definitely a bit of that broke off too. Let's see what it can do. That's the best I can do on the circumstances, but I think what we'll do is we'll maybe put it together, try and get the lid on a bit more secure, and see if it charges, see if it goes. This one doesn't really want to secure it. Right. These batteries have long screws and short screws the long screws go on here the short screws go on here but what i tried there a month ago off camera was this the um drive the long screw up through. if i drive the long screw up here it'll hold this end on because the top has been damaged and there's nothing for the short screw to thread into. So I'll drive the long screws up there and cut them off and dremel them off and even them off a bit. There we are. That'll hold that top on. So just need to even these off. You can see I've cut the two bits that are protruding off, them two bits of screws. Then I'm going to give it a little bop.
and the chair's not stopping the tool sliding on. That's nice and smooth. That's good. Grind it in the tool. I would say that's, that's pretty good there. I'll try it in the charger to see if it's showing any faults or anything unusual. Showing it's fully charged is probably what you'd expect. And the four bars. I'm calling that one fixed anyway. So battery number one had been on charging for a while there and it's get, got up to 18.9. It was still charging. I'm pretty confident it would get up to a maximum voltage there. But when you do the jump start like I done with that, it's best to leave it overnight and have another look at it because sometimes it can fail uh, when you heat up the cells like that. But I'll try it in the machine now to see if it goes. Yeah. That's those two batteries fixed. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we've got this Dewalt 4 ampere 18 volt XR battery. Um, to show you what's wrong with it. First of all, take a look. No bars on the charge. Not even registering on a drill. Not even lighting the LED. Not a hope. Testing it on the multimeter, we're getting 12.7374 volts, which is far, far too low. If we take the lead off this one, have the screws out. With the cells removed from the outer casing, I can see there's a lot of corrosion here, but that's not the most concerning thing, to be quite honest. When you take these out, you have to check the connections. Look. Look at that. And the reason why we're not getting the right voltage is um, we're getting the disconnect there. Complete disconnect. Look, that nickel strip was the spot weld had given way. So you can see this one side is only this top cell connected. This bottom one's completely disconnected on that side. And as a result, I would check the voltage. The bottom one's showing 3.41, but the top one is showing about, what do we see? About half a volt, if you can see that. Half a volt. And this happened because of this connection with this one. This cell was carrying the full load, and this was doing nothing. So the voltage never dropped in this, and there was too much pressure in this, and that drained it down to what probably is below recoverable voltage but careful when you're doing this you could um, cross a cause a cross connection cause yourself all sorts of all sorts of hassle working with cells is kind of dangerous These slid out now. Probably took the two out. For reasons I'll explain in a moment. <clears throat> so we'll take the bad one first. I think this is the bad one. This is the good one. 3.4. I think in anything there. Maybe it's because uh, there's so much rust on this other side. 
I was getting a false reading when I was in the pack. I think there's anything in that cell. I think that cell has gone beyond. Not even. I think this cell here, the top cell in the pack, is past the point of rescue. But I'll put it into that charger to see if it will even recognise it as a as a battery. It's going to be anything. No. Not, not doing anything. No. Can I get another slots? No. No. If you can see the difference in the good cell, if I put that on, it'll do something. See, it's it's registering and it's showing it's starting to charge it. The rummaging in the spares box, I managed to get this other 20 hour cell. This one, however, Though it's the same type of cell, the same number, the same brand. It's a little bit higher in the voltage than the one that was originally in the battery. So that's coming up to 3.4. So we probably will get a bit in cell imbalance. But hopefully it'll not be too bad. I'll maybe just connect these two together, put them onto the battery and see what it See what way it turns out. Right, with the cells attached, we're getting one bar, which is very interesting. And we're getting close to 17 volts, which is in the chargeable range, in my opinion. I'll just stick it together and see if I can get it to go, get it to take a charge. Get down into this casing. Let's set back together and it's showing one bar. So the next thing to do is try it on the charger, see if anything's different. And it's charging, so we're gonna to have to leave it a while to see what comes of this. 
Here we are, finally got where we want. Solid red light, three bars. So we're gonna check the voltage now. Right, as I suspected, we have cell imbalance within this battery. So we haven't reached full voltage, 19.68, which is below the 20 volts that we would like. But still in all, we still get a battery that is usable for some applications. Um, I'll test it on a drill. So here we are. Seems to be giving her plenty of power. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos.